After receiving her bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Auburn in 1977, Jan Davis went on to obtain her master's and her doctorate. She served as a NASA director, spent over 670 hours in space, and received numerous awards, including the prestigious presidential rank of meritorious service as a NASA executive. Jan is Huntsville's astronaut. We take pride in that. She's ours. You know, you will see a street named after her in Research Park. You will go into Huntsville High School and there are photos of their famous alumni and here is Jan staring at you. If you did not know that she was an astronaut, with her unassuming personality, uh, you would probably have to pry that information out of her. She is an extremely unassuming humble individual. In 1979, Jan took a career opportunity when she returned to her hometown of Huntsville to work for NASA after a brief stint in Texas working as a petroleum engineer. While working as an aerospace engineer at the Marshall Space Flight Center, Jan attended classes at the University of Alabama in Huntsville to earn her master's and doctorate degrees. She's dedicated to detail. She's dedicated to uh, doing the very best that she can in any activity that she participates in. In 1986, Jan took the reins as team leader for the structural analysis of the Hubble telescope. I learned very quickly uh, Jan's expertise, especially in structural engineering, uh, her dedication to the work, and her enthusiasm. In 1987, following the Challenger incident, Jan became lead engineer for a critical redesign of the Space Shuttle's solid rocket booster external tank attach ring. That same year, Jan was selected to join NASA's astronaut corps. Very early in her career, Jan had set a very lofty goal of becoming an astronaut. I had the opportunity to be one of the ones to nominate Jan for member in the astronaut corps. She received a phone call from the director of the program at Johnson Space Center. She asked if I would sit there while she took the phone call and while she acted very poised during that conversation, at the same time she was digging her fingernails right into the palm of my hand. To fall into that category, to be one of the 45 women in space, oh, from the United States, that is an incredible accomplishment. After first serving as technical support for payloads and then in mission control, Jan joined the flight crew of three STS missions and conducted a variety of experiments and research while logging hundreds of Earth orbits and millions of miles in space. My friend Jan was finally realizing her dream, pushing the frontiers of space. Just as I've always heard space is a bit of a spiritual experience, the Grand Canyon is too. <laughs> the one night after everyone else had gone to sleep, I was just staring at the sky because it was so beautiful. And the space shuttle went across. And I could tell it was the space shuttle. And all I could think of was that she was there above the Earth and I was down below it, about as deep as you can get in the Earth. And uh, that's something that I, I'll never forget. Well, Auburn University has, because of people like Jan, developed quite a reputation for space exploration. Completing her final mission in 1997, Dr. Davis went on to serve as Director of Human Exploration and Development of Space. Then in 2003, following the Columbia accident, she was appointed as Director of NASA's Safety and Mission Assurance Directorate, where she would pioneer critical changes to assure the safe return to flight of the space shuttle. I think Jan is an individual who models the Auburn Creed. And what the creed stands for, the selfless service, um, giving back to others, the hard work, she models that every day. Auburn University is extremely fortunate to have Jan Davis uh, as an alumnus. Jan Davis has also served as a member of the Auburn Alumni Association's Board of Directors and currently serves on Auburn Samuel Gannon College of Engineering Alumni Advisory Council. She graciously accepted uh, the invitation when it was extended and became very involved in our uh, student recruitment 
and Activities Committee. Jan and her husband, Judge Dick Richardson, live in Hampton Cove in Huntsville, Alabama. Although she has retired from NASA, Dr. Davis is now the Vice President of Jacobs Engineering Science, a major technical services contractor for NASA. She cares very deeply for the work that they do there. Um, she works really hard to help cultivate her folks. I know she did that at NASA as well. And um, what she's doing now is just very important to her. And that speaks to her character. I'm really impressed with Jan and how effective she has been as a role model in showing that you can set lofty goals and you can achieve them. No stranger to receiving accolades, Jan has been inducted into the Alabama Aviation Hall of Fame and the Alabama Engineering Hall of Fame. This dedicated Auburn alumna has truly been an example for those who have goals set in the stars. This type of inspiration and dedication is certainly due a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Auburn Alumni Association. To be recognized by the institution that has given her so much and who she and the institution that she values is um, is an honor to her. She's humbled, and I think it will again, um, in a small way, help propel her to even give back more. Jan, I was so excited to hear that you were being recognized tonight, and I wanted to congratulate you personally on your receiving this Lifetime Achievement Award. Wow, thank you so much. And good evening, everyone. I had the pleasure of serving on the board of the Alabama Women's Hall of Fame. And this week we honored, in honor of Women's History Month, uh, Miss Nina Maglianica, who is an esteemed Birmingham attorney, and I watched a video of her receiving an award in the 1990s, and she ser shared some advice from her dad, which was stand up and be seen, speak up and be heard, and sit down and be appreciated. <laughs> so I'll keep my, my remarks brief. I want to thank the Auburn Alumni Association for this very prestigious honor and I want to congratulate the other recipients here tonight. They are an incredible group of people and I'm so flattered to be in the same company of them. I also appreciate the selection board and I'm sure the other honorees do as well for bestowing this award on us while we can still remember what our achievements were <laughs> in our lifetime. <laughs> I wouldn't be here tonight accepting this award if it weren't for my parents who are watching tonight from heaven. They've sacrificed so much so that my brother and I could have a good education and a great upbringing. And they stressed that education was the best thing that they could do for us because it was something that no one could take from us. They also taught us to treat everyone as equals and to treat everyone with respect, to work hard and to make the most of our opportunities. As my mom told me when I was chosen to be an astronaut, Serve God, then your country, and go for it. Thanks, Mom, that was great advice. I wouldn't be here tonight accepting this award if it weren't for my teachers and my Auburn professors. They supported me, disciplined me, and taught me things that weren't in the textbooks. For example, when I was asked by Auburn to represent them in the ASME Old Guard competition, uh, for my senior project, I told them that I couldn't afford to make the trip. I had just graduated and I couldn't afford to go from Texas to Florida for the competition. So my professors dug into their own pockets and paid for my trip to go. I won that regional competition and later the national OGAR prize because I had to. I couldn't let them down. And that's just one example of how the Auburn family takes care of its own and creates opportunities for them. And I know Jim Roy is here who took me around in San Francisco when I won that Old Guard Prize. Thank you, Jim. I wouldn't be here tonight if it weren't for my NASA family. NASA gave me tremendous opportunities and they paid my tuition and salary to go to school for a year for my PhD. 
the uh, Marshall Space Flight Center Center Director, Bill Lucas, told me not to come back to work until I had that degree, until I had that doctorate. And my supervisors, Jim Odom, who you saw in the film, and uh, Alex McCool, uh, did what it took to support me until I got that degree, which took, took me over a year and a half from that point. And that was a tremendous boost that helped me get selected to be an astronaut. And none of us would be here tonight if it weren't for Dr. Ed Dice who served on the Auburn Alumni Association board with me. It was his idea to have the Lifetime Achievement Award and to have a really big, nice function as we have tonight and to appropriately honor the recipients. And I'm so glad that he received this award before his death. So thank you, Ed and Diane, who is here tonight. My life would not be as rich as it is if it weren't for the blessings and abilities and an opportunities that God has given me including the country that we have freedom, thanks to our other recipients tonight and others uh, who have served our country well. The greatest gift that he has given to me is my family, my immediate family who are here tonight, my husband and soulmate, Dick, and our children, Francis and Patrick, and Francis' fiance, John. I love you very much, and thank you for being in my life. Thank all of you also for being here tonight, my friends, especially and my colleagues who are here and who traveled far to honor us, to honor all of us. You see, it really takes a village to enable someone to have a lifetime of achievement. And we all need to continue to help others and to inspire others. The Mars Rover's spirit and opportunity were named by a young girl, Sophie who was an orphan in Siberia and was adopted by American parents. She wrote in an essay, and I quote, I used to live in an orphanage. It was dark and cold and lonely. At night, I looked up into the sparkly sky and felt better. I dreamed I could fly there. In America, I can make all of my dreams come true. Thank you for the spirit and the opportunity. And that's why the Rovers got that name, got those names. And now we have Curiosity, also named by a student, on its way to Mars. We must instill a spirit for the future generations to explore. And we must create opportunities for them. We must give them the curiosity to take those opportunities. And we as a nation must continue to explore. That is what we all need to do. And that is what I want to do, to help others. It takes a village. Who better than the loveliest village to help others make their dreams come true? Thank you and War Eagle.